infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey, everybody. It's Robert here. And uh, I want to thank you again for uh, coming to Outbreak News Interviews, and I have a good interview today. Um, researchers in Connecticut have been studying the use of stevia for the treatment of Lyme disease as an alternative to routine antibiotics. Well, joining me now is Eva Sappi, PhD. Dr. Sappi is professor and department chair of biology and environmental science at the University of New Haven. And she's also the director of the Lyme disease program there. Dr. Sappi, welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you very much for inviting me, Robert. You're, you're welcome. Um, now, Lyme disease is a tick-borne disease caused by the bacterium Borrelia burgdorferi, in which antibiotics are the standard treatment. However, this type of treatment is not always effective, and there's relapses that occur. Um, what is it about Borrelia burgdorferi that makes it sometimes difficult to treat with standard antibiotics? You know, when we discovered Borrelia burgdorferi in the 19, 1980s, practically, a uh, lot of uh, good experiment was dedicated to see what kind of antibiotic we could use. And uh, at the beginning, it looked like that we have very good antibiotics. Uh, uh, the, the experiment showed that the concentration which can kill in a test tube at least for area is achievable in the clinic. And from Unfortunately, from day one in the clinic and in some some ex, uh, other experiments, it sh uh, showed that it might be not not as easy, and it had it actually took a couple of decades to to realize that this borrelia can take different forms, and some forms are not as easy to er eradicate than other forms. So, when I started the research, uh, practically is in early two thousand, my first question was. Uh, if if Borrelia can uh, create those different forms, is all those antibiotics we're using for Lyme disease can 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 be effective? And and the very very first experiment showed it is something wrong. So I think that's that's the problem with Borrelia. It it is it can mimic a lot of different forms. It knows how to escape from or antibiotic treatment, and we need to figure this out how to really address this question. Well, you, you published this study back in 2015 in the European Journal of Microbiology and Immunology uh, that's come to light again here in 2017. And uh, it was testing the effectiveness of stevia against the spirochete. Um, for my audience that may not know, what is stevia? Stevia is a Japanese leaves, and uh, we use it as a sugar substitute. Uh, uh, however, in Japan, they're using stevia for centuries as an antimicrobial agent. So this is not that's not new. That is not just having this nice sugar taste, but also good as an almost a natural antibiotics. Okay, and and what made you decide to try to study the effectiveness of stevia against Borrelia? I think it came out from frustration because we tried so many different antibiotics, antibiotic combinations, even some natural agent, and doesn't look like they're working, especially in a form we call it biofilm. Biofilm, is, we believe now, is the most, most resistant form for Borrelia. And it was a 2011 uh, Nature paper showing that if you add sugar, they, they tested different sugars, to the antibiotic treatment, it very much more effective. So at this point, we decided that uh, we will test a lot of different sugars, natural, uh, even fake sugars. Of course, stevia on, was on the list, with or without antibiotics. And the very, very first experiment, stevia stood up as a very effective agent. Now, now in your study, you can, like you said, you compare the effectiveness of stevia extracts against Borrelia, uh, versus a, a group of antibiotics, including doxycycline and uh, and some other combinations. How did you perform this study? I mean, um, in 2011, actually, we, we published a paper when we 
when we uh, develop some new technologies, uh, how to look at uh, the antibiotic sensitivity of the different forms. Interestingly, a uh, couple of years later, uh, John Hopkins researchers also developed a, a new technique. So now we have a couple of definitely a uh, novel approach how to look at the antibiotic sensitivity of Borrelia. And we use all of those techniques, including the oil techniques, to be sure that we're not missing anything. Okay. So um, what were your findings? Um, first, first, of course, we also combined stevia with different antibiotics like doxycycline and some other one. And uh, it looked very, very effective. Of course, the question was at this point, can it be effective even without those antibiotics? And uh, if you look at the 2015 paper, we tried... Uh, we tried uh, the combinations, which was uh, recently uh, found by John Hopkins researcher, and compared to stevia by itself. And actually, stevia was the winner in the in the lineup. That's amazing. Um, now, the 2015 study is what we would call in the laboratory world an in vitro or a test mm -hmm. tube study. However, I understand that human clinical trials will be or currently are taking place now. Uh, can, can you shed any light on that? I mean, right now, Dr. Horowitz, Richard Horowitz, Hyde Park, New York, is conducting a small trial. Uh, we don't have the result yet. Uh, because the, but because the stevia is, has a, such a beautiful um, safety profile, I know people trying it already, uh, purchasing some stevia and try it with the treatment. I, I was getting uh, just last week a lot of emails, people people reporting positive effect. But again, obviously, we need to see in a control study whether it really has good effect. Sure. And what is your lab up in uh, Connecticut? Uh, what are you doing to continue this research? I mean, right now, the question is exactly. So test tube data is very interesting and could be suggestive, but it is test tube data. Mm -hmm. So uh, the question is, how can we help further the clinic to find effective agents? So we have two approach right now. We using uh, some skin biopsies to grow Borrelia. Uh, and uh, we try to develop a technique uh, when we can test antibiotic in, a, in an actual tissue. The other thing is we would like to use some model organism uh, to test uh, Borrelia uh, antibiotic sensitivity. And mouse is very, very expensive, and you cannot test a lot of different uh, agent combinations. So we were looking into something called zebrafish, uh, which is, I know, probably surprising, but very, very easy, easily, obviously, to maintain. You can have uh, lots of, lots of zebrafish in your lab. And uh, surprisingly, zebrafish has a similar immune system to human. Uh, so it, it could be a very, uh, very good model or organism for Lyme disease. Okay. And um, any final thoughts, anything that I left out that you want to add? Um, again, uh, people people looking for you know just uh, just uh, the right combination or right antibiotics, right combination of antibiotics, and there's more and more data coming out from from uh, the literature that it may be more more into the Lyme disease. I just talked to a UCAM professor, uh, and he reminded me that we have we have a called a microbiome in our body, which is helps us to you know to stay healthy. And he strongly believes that uh, recovering from Lyme disease is not just finding right antibiotics, but also be sure that you have the right microbiome. So this research is coming along nicely. Uh, so I'm hoping that, that very soon we're going to have a more holistic, comprehensive approach for Lyme disease. Okay, very good. Very interesting research. I want to thank you, Dr. Eva Sappi, for your time and expertise, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right, bye-bye.